On the day following the meeting of Boris and Rostov occurred the review of the Austrian and Russian troops, including those who had just arrived from Russia, as well as those who had made the campaign with Kutuzov. Both the Emperor of Russia, with the Cesarevich, and the Emperor of Austria, with the Archduke, reviewed this army, aggregating eighty thousand men. Early in the morning, the soldiers, elegantly spruced and attired, began to move, falling into line in front of the fortress. Here thousands of legs and bayonets moved along with streaming banners, and at the command of their officers, halted or wheeled, or formed into detachments, passing by other similar bodies of infantry, in other uniforms. There, with measured hoof-beats and jingling of trappings, came the cavalry, gaily dressed in blue, red, and green embroidered uniforms, with gaily dressed musicians ahead, riding coal-black, chestnut, and gray horses. Yonder, stretching out in a long line, with their polished shining cannon, jolting with a brazen din on their carriages, and with the smell of linstocks, came the artillery between the infantry and cavalry, and drew up in the places assigned to them. Not only the generals in full-dress uniform, with slender waists or stout waists, tightened in to the last degree, and with red necks tightly clasped by their collars, and wearing their scarfs and all their orders. Not only the officers, promenaded and decked with all their glories, but all the soldiers with shining, clean-washed, and freshly shaven faces, and with all their opportunities polished up to the highest luster, and all the horses gaily comparisoned and groomed, so that their coats were as glossy as satin, and every individual hair in their manes in exactly its proper place, had the consciousness that something grave, significant, and solemn was taking place. Every general and every soldier felt his own insignificance, counting himself as merely a grain of sand in the sea of humanity, and at the same time felt his power when regarded as part of this mighty whole. By means of strenuous efforts and devoted energy, the preparations which had begun early in the morning were completed by ten o'clock, and everything was in proper order. The ranks were drawn up across the broad parade-ground. The whole army was arranged in three columns, in front the cavalry, then the artillery, and in the rear the infantry. Between each division of the army was a space like a street. The three divisions of this army were sharply contrasted with each other. Kutuzov's war-worn veterans, among whom on the right flank of the front row stood the Pavlogradsky hussars, the troops of the line that had just arrived from Russia, and the regiments of the guard and the Austrian army. But all stood in one line, under one commander, and in identical order. Like the wind rustling the leaves, a murmur agitated the lines. They are coming! They are coming! Vivacious shouts of command were heard, and throughout the whole army, like a wave, ran the bustle of the final preparations. Far away in front of them, near Olmutz, appeared a group coming toward them. At this moment, though the day was calm, a gentle breeze, as it were, stirred the army, and seemed to shake the pennoned pikes and the loosened standards clinging to their staffs. It seemed as though the army itself by this silent tremor expressed its gladness at the approach of the emperors. The word of command was heard uttered by one voice. Semirno, eyes front. Then, like the answering of cocks at daybreak, many voices repeated this command from point to point, and all grew still. In the death-like silence, the only sound heard was the trampling of horses' feet. This was the suite of the emperors. The two monarchs rode along the left wing, and the bugles of the first cavalry regiment burst forth with the general march. It seemed as if it were not the bugles that played this march, but as if the army itself, in its delight at the approach of the emperors, emitted these sounds. Their echoes had not died away, when the Emperor Alexander's affable young voice was distinctly heard addressing the men. He uttered the usual welcome, and the first regiment gave forth one huzzah, so deafening, so long drawn out and expressive of joy, that the men themselves were amazed and awestruck at the magnitude and strength of the mass which they constituted. Hurrah! Rostov, standing in the front rank of Kutuzov's army, which the emperor first approached, 
shared the feeling experienced by every man in that army a feeling of self-forgetfulness a proud consciousness of invincibility and of passionate attachment to him on whose account all this solemn parade was prepared he felt that the mere word of this man was only needed for this mighty mass including himself as an insignificant grain of sand to dash through fire and water to commit crime to face death or perform the mightiest deeds of heroism and therefore he could not help trembling could not help his heart melting within him at the sight of this approaching word hurrah 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 was roared on all sides and one regiment after another welcomed the sovereigns with the music of the general marsh and then renewed huzzas the general march and huzzas on huzzas which growing louder and louder mingled in one overpowering and deafening tumult until the sovereign came quite close every regiment in its silence and rigidity seemed like a lifeless body but as soon as the sovereign came abreast of it the regiment woke to life and broke out into acclamations which mingled with the roar extending down the whole line past which the sovereign rode amid the tremendous deafening tumult of these thousands of voices through the midst of the armies standing in their squares as motionless as though they had been carved out of granite moved easily carelessly but symmetrically and above all with freedom and grace the hundreds of riders constituting the suites and in front of all two men the emperors upon them and upon them alone were concentrated the suppressed but eager attention of all that mass of warriors the handsome young emperor alexander in his horse guards uniform and three-cornered hat worn pointed forward with his pleasant face and clear but not loud voice was the cynosure of all eyes rostof stood not far from the buglers and his keen glance recognized the emperor while he was still far off and followed him as he drew near when the sovereign had approached to a distance of twenty paces and nikolai could clearly distinguish every feature of his handsome and radiant young face he experienced a sense of affection and enthusiasm such as he had never felt before everything every feature every motion seemed to him bewitching in his sovereign pausing in front of the pavlograd regiment the monarch said something in french to the emperor of austria and smiled seeing this smile rostof himself involuntarily smiled also and felt a still more powerful impulse of love toward his sovereign he felt a burning desire to display this love in some way he knew that this was impossible and he felt like weeping the sovereign summoned the regimental commander and said a few words to him Bos moi what would happen to me if the sovereign were to address me thought rostof i should die of happiness the emperor also addressed the officers gentlemen said he and rostof listened as to a voice from heaven how happy he would have been now could he only die for his tsar i thank you all from my heart you have won the standards of the george proved yourself worthy of them only to die to die for him thought rostof the sovereign said a few words more which rostof did not catch and the soldiers straining their throats cried hurrah hurrah rostof also joined with them leaning forward in his saddle and shouting with all his might willing to burst his lungs in his efforts to express the full extent of his enthusiasm for his sovereign the emperor stood a few seconds in front of the hussars as though he were undecided how can the sovereign be undecided mused rostof but immediately even this indecision seemed to him a new proof of majesty and charm like everything else that the sovereign did the emperor's indecision lasted only a moment his foot shod in a narrow sharp-pointed boot such as were worn at that time pressed against the flank of the english groomed bay mare on which he sat the sovereign's hand in a white glove gathered up the reins and he rode off accompanied by a disorderly tossing sea of adjutants as he kept riding farther and farther down the line he kept halting in front of the different regiments and at last only his white plume could be seen by rostof distinguishing him from the suite that accompanied the emperors 
in the number of those who accompanied the emperor he noticed bolkonsky lazily and indifferently bestriding his steed the yesterday evening's quarrel with him came into his mind and the question arose whether or no he ought to challenge him of course it is out of the question now thought rostof is it worth while to think or to talk about such a thing at such a moment as this at a time when one feels such impulses of love enthusiasm and self-renunciation what consequence are our petty quarrels and provocations i love the whole world i forgive everyone now said rostof to himself after the sovereign had ridden past almost all the regiments the troops began to move in front of him in ceremonial march and rostof on his bedouin which he had recently bought of denisof rode at the end of his squadron that is alone and in a most conspicuous position before his sovereign just before he came up to where the emperor was rostof who was an admirable horseman plunged the spurs in bedouin's flanks and urged him into that mad frenzied gallop which bedouin always took when he was excited pressing his foaming mouth back to his breast arching his tail and seeming to fly through the air and spurning the earth gracefully tossing and interweaving his legs bedouin also conscious that the emperor's eyes were fastened on him dashed gallantly by rostov himself keeping his feet back and sitting straight in his saddle feeling himself one with his horse rode by his sovereign with disturbed but beatific face a very devil as denisof expressed it bravo pravla gradzui exclaimed the emperor bosmoi how happy i should be if only he would bid me to dash instantly into the fire thought rostov when the review was ended the officers who had just come from russia and those of kutuzov's division began to gather in groups and talk about the rewards of the campaign about the austrians and their uniforms about their line of battle about bonaparte and what a desperate position he had got himself into now especially if essen's corps should join them and prussia should take to their side but more than all else in each of these circles the conversation ran on the sovereign alexander and every word that he had spoken was repeated and everything that he had done was praised and all were enthusiastic over him all had but one single expectation under the personal direction of the sovereign to go with all speed against the enemy under the command of the emperor himself it would be an impossibility not to win the victory over anyone in the world so thought rostov and the majority of the officers after this review all were more assured of victory than they could have been after the gaining of two battles End of chapter eight